tonight's EDGE report. Loman Niolox or SB1 steel as exhibited on the Pole Force Mic 1. Stay tuned, guys. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 28 October 2013. Tonight's video, not a knife review, but a sort of steel performance analysis uh, on my Pole Force Mic 1, which uses Lohman's Niolox or SB1 steel. Uh, frankly, it's a steel I just can't find much information on other than uh, chemical composition and some opinions or guesses at how it's going to perform. Uh, it is a normal composition, not powdered stainless steel. Not very high in carbon or chromium, about 8 tenths of a percent of carbon and 12.7 percent chromium. <clears throat> now at that lower chromium level, in order to remain stainless, it needs to have uh, kind of a low carbon content because carbides form between chromium and carbon using up the rust resistant properties of the chromium so with only eight tenths of a percent of carbon uh, only 12 or 13 percent of chromium is needed for it to be rust resistant how does it get hard and tough and wear resistant well it has sort of this voodoo element Niobium. Nobody's really very expert from what I can see on the knife forums and in the discussions <clears throat> about what niobium does and how other than to say it causes the steel to have a very fine grain structure. Now there's also some vanadium and some molybdenum and other trace elements uh, that are supposed to make this steel behave a lot like D2 mechanically from a wear resistance and toughness standpoint, but be more stainless. Uh, okay, I'll buy that, or at least accept it enough to investigate it. Let me tell you kind of my story, my progression with this steel just over the few days I've had this knife. Of course, as most of you would expect, one of the first things I did with a brand new knife with a factory edge from Pull Force by way of lion steel would be, yeah, you guessed it, to sharpen it. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Let's see if we can get in a little tight here and show you that edge. Pretty standard for what you're used to seeing on this channel, nice and polished. Looks about normal for the Apostle P sharpening bench, doesn't it? Well, yeah, except for the fact that it took about four hours to get there. Uh, this knife comes pretty thick behind the edge. I would guess it to be between 25 and 35 thousandths, just from my uh, pinch caliper here. Um, comes from the factory with a convex edge that if I were to approximate an angle, if it were a V grind, <clears throat> probably about 25 degrees per side, kind of standard fare for lion steel. And I think what Pole Force wants on this knife, it is a very thick stocked, stoutly built, <clears throat> one knife does everything, tactical blade, uh, specifically purpose built for tactical operators in the field. So it wasn't made to be a slicer it's made to to have a pretty sharp edge 
and a very durable edge that uh, can have the schnot beat out of it and maintain a working edge. I'll bet it does that too. Uh, however, remember I said it was sort of designed and regarded to have D2-like mechanical properties, but more rust resistance. Um, just from a sharpening standpoint, I can tell you it doesn't behave much like D2. Uh, D2 much more readily has stock removed by grinding and much more readily sort of finds its own razor edge. This knife just takes a lot of work. Uh, normally, as you know, I apply a secondary bevel of 15 degrees per side. Uh, I bailed on that after a couple hours. Went to 18 and then put on a super tiny 20 degree micro bevel and the reason I bailed on the 15 degree secondary is first of all I think it would have been too broad from just an appearance standpoint second of all it would have taken hours and hours and hours and I don't think the knife needs it given its purpose uh, and then it was some uh, some trial and error going all the way up through the polishing tapes finding that I had scratches left from previous grits and I, you know, I, I essentially did the last couple phases of sharpening over a couple times to get to what I think is a really, really sharp edge. Uh, D2, I can do it once and it's perfect. This stuff, uh, I'm sure I need to get to know it a little better, but I'm also sure that it's not very grindable. Um, not quite as difficult to sharpen as CPM M4. Uh, about as hard to sharpen as LMAX, I would say. But with better results in the end than LMAX, I would also say. Now that we know where we are and how we got here, let's uh, see how the edge holds up. Come with me. We're going to go cut up some cardboard, a little bit of wood, and we'll meet back here to discuss the results. Okay, before we start uh, <clears throat> cutting up wood and cardboard, let's uh, check initial sharpness real quick. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think this knife is much of a phone book paper cutter. Not, not really a slicing profile. <clears throat> Very thick behind the edge and kind of wedge-like, but uh, let's see what we got. Well, if I do my part, the knife does its part. Okay, let's start with some cardboard. Standard two-ply uh, corrugated cardboard. We'll just uh, start cutting this up. I got three sections of it, all in pretty good condition, nice and dry. Piece, I'm going sort of down grain. <clears throat> we'll go across the grain on this one. That's harder than it looks, huh? I got a little fold going on here. Enough of that. Let's uh, let's check out some wood. This is just a soft pine <clears throat> paint stirrer. We'll shave a little bit of this. Well, that one went so well. Let's do another one. This 
This thing is vicious, man. See those wood shavings flying? Wow. Let me grab another piece of cardboard and we'll oh, see after cutting that wood if we still have anything left for the cardboard. Not bad. All right, let me go get another piece of paper. I'll meet you back at the reviewing table and we'll, uh, we'll check post-cut test sharpness. How's that sound? Okay, gang, here we are. Uh, Post-cut test, checking sharpness. All I've done is uh, wipe off the edge to get any wood or cardboard goo off. Let's see what we got. Oh, that was me, I think. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I got the camera in the way. Actually, I think this is pretty much all my technique. Let's see what I can feel. I maybe have a little more toothiness than we started out with. Definitely a little more toothiness. Okay, I'm gonna go run this across the strop. <clears throat> Come back, cut up another piece of paper and see where we're at. Okay guys, we've made uh, about a dozen passes over the fine side of the strop. <clears throat> the edge feels by my finger and my fingernail will be about where it was when it started. Let's see what it looks like on paper. Maybe better. Having said that, okay, not bad. Well, all right, kind of an interesting little look at a new steel uh, that not many people know much about. You know, I didn't intend this uh, video to be a torture test or an ultimate long-term edge retention test of Nylox. I really just wanted to kind of get a feel for how it behaved in sharpening and in edge retention versus other steels I'm used to working with. And uh, This is a little bit subjective but experiential at the same time. Of course, sharpenability, <clears throat> about like LMAX, not as good as D2. Uh, not as easy to sharpen as S30V or CTSX HP. Uh, not even as easy as M390 or ZDP189. It's sort of toward the difficult end uh, of, not, of knife steels to sharpen. What's the trade-off for that? Well, we would hope that edge retention is the trade-off, wouldn't we? And although I didn't take it to completely dull, I did cut up some wood and some cardboard with it to see what the edge felt like when I got done. And after, what, maybe 30, 40, 50 cardboard cuts and a couple paint stirrers chopped up or sliced up, whittled up with it, uh, we ended up with a toothy but still very sharp edge. It wouldn't readily slice through phone book paper, but it really is never been intended to be a slicer. Um, still plenty serviceable cutter. And after some very light stropping, it's back to uh, lightsaber sharpness. So, does it behave like D2? I think it kind of does. So, although it's not as sharpenable, I think edge retention looks to be about the same. Uh, the keenness of the edge able to be applied, maybe not quite what D2 is, but, you know, what steel is. And in return for that, we get really really good rust resistance you know my sharpening system the edge pro uses a lot of water and i was in that water for a long time with this knife you know little drips and drops and runs getting back underneath the uh the scales toward the pivot 
plenty of opportunity for flash rust. I saw nothing. So if the object is to make something like D2 in performance but with much better rust resistance, it seems that Lohman's Niolox is that steel. And it's very easy to see why Dietmar Pohl chose it for this folding tactical knife design. He definitely marches to a bit of a different drummer. And this time, I kind of like his tune. Uh, we'll see how this steel continues to perform, and I will keep you posted. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word and my pole force mic one are sharp. Now, for those of you who are still hanging around, check out what comes next. In the middle of my cut test, I kind of got in trouble for messing up the kitchen. Check it out. Really? I'll clean it up. Well, that's right. I didn't know what you were doing. Uh, okay, let's see how I'm going to edit that.